Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Jason, and today we are discussing the top skills that every good man should possess. These are in no particular order, and here we go. <laughs> How did I do this before? Screw it. Fighting skills, I think, are crucial. This is something that every man should possess. You need to possess the skills, the knowledge, the know-how, the ability to protect yourself, defend yourself, and put up a good fight if necessary. That is all-encompassing, in my opinion. It goes for everything from shooting skills, being, being a good marksman, not just shooting as far as being able to hit your target on the static range, but, but good tactics uh, out in the field, and that's something that I've been working on as well. I've taken up jujitsu training, I've done some boxing in the past, and I believe it's really, really important to kind of to possess some sort of martial art abilities because what if you are without a weapon? And a weapon is not always your first resort because you can get into a lot of legal uh, problems if you immediately, someone tries to punch you and you immediately draw a weapon and, and, and drop them. You should be able to defend yourself with your hands, with your body, and I think that that that's a big investment that just doesn't that doesn't come you can't read a book on karate and know how to do karate you've got to get out there you've got to spar with real people in real life real life settings lumped into that same category of being able to fight is fitness it doesn't matter if you have all the skills and knowledge it doesn't matter if you were a black belt 15 years ago but you haven't trained since then if you were out of shape you're soft you're squishy you can't run you can't jump you can't you can't wrestle you can't grapple if you can't do that, you're absolutely useless. So having a good solid foundation of fitness where your body can actually go do the things I think is crucial. That should do it. Every man should have a basic understanding of how to use tools. Yes, a hammer in this application was not the most effective for some reason. Didn't seem to start up after I did that. Having a basic understanding of tools, having a basic understanding of carpentry, mechanics, how to just fix things, to build things. Do you know how to build a shed if you were required to? Do you know how to repair basic things in your house? Do you know how to frame a wall? Do you know how to change the oil and tires and a belt on your truck? All these basic skills takes it takes a long time. It takes a lifetime of investing in these things and actually getting hands-on experience to learn how to do these things and to be proficient with them. I would say lumped into this same category is knowing how to operate machinery like a, like a tractor or a backhoe, knowing how to drive a stick shift, manual transmission, knowing how to ride a motorcycle, an ATV, a side-by-side. -side. Oh, and boats. Don't forget about boats. Have you ever driven a boat, a larger boat? Do you know how to, how it, how to take it out of neutral, put it into gear, and, 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 and operate the thing? Do you know how to drive a boat? Can you, can you dock a boat? Can you pull it up next to the dock without crashing into something and destroying it? Take every opportunity, every chance you get to get in the driver's seat of one of these things and really figure out how they work, and that way you're just a much more well-rounded individual. There's no telling what life is going to throw at you, and you don't want to be that guy that shows up and just has no idea what to do with it. You want to be the guy that gets behind the wheel of the getaway vehicle in the emergency, in, your t in, the, in the crucial time, and it's a stick shift, and you're like, oh, uh, you dump the clutch and install the engine and you don't know how to do it. So you don't wanna be that guy. So just possessing skills and mechanics and carpentry and just man tools, being able to use these things right here, these hands to craft, build, and fix, I think is a big deal. Roger, Wilco, uh, Alpha Tango, read you four by four, over. It is absolutely crucial for a man to understand how to communicate with other human beings. Females, males, does not matter. You need to be able to effectively communicate with people of all age groups, nationalities, and, and what have you. The, and I'm not just talking about radios. I was just being silly there. But, um, and by the way, you think my, my antennas could help? <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, I was just being silly with the radios. Learning how to use a radio is a big one. I, I don't, I'm not very good with a radio. I'm not well, well versed on a radio, but I'm learning how to do it. Uh, just having basic communication skills, learning how to shake somebody's hand and look them in the eyes. That's something I've been working on with my son. 
And I think that that's a, that's a crucial thing. If you want people to show you respect, you need to treat them with respect. Just basic verbal communication, body language, perhaps learning a foreign language so you can better communicate with people that are in your area or an influx of people that might be coming into your area. I'm talking about written communication. Can you convey what the message that you're trying to get across by the written word? Can you effectively tell a story? Can you communicate a message clearly to someone that might have to read it as opposed to listening to you? These are all things that men need to understand and in order to be successful, in order to accomplish really great things in this world, you have to be good at communication. I used to not be a very good public speaker and I guess it's debatable whether I'm a good public speaker now, but the more opportunities that I took, the more chances that I took, the more I put myself out there on the stage and in the spotlight and I presented my thoughts as clearly as I possibly can, the better I became at it, the more confident I became, the nervousness, the jitters kind of went away for the most part, and it just became so much easier and I became better at it. So I highly encourage you to get out of your comfort zone. If you're one of those introvert, shy people that doesn't really like to talk in front of people, man, I just encourage you to step outside your comfort zone a little bit, start small, start in small groups, and just start speaking your mind. Talk about something that you're passionate about and and share your thoughts and feelings, share the knowledge that you possess because all of you watching have skills and abilities that are, that are worth sharing with other people. Don't keep it to yourself just because you're a little bit, you know, nervous. Discipline and finding a balance in our life. This is something that we can always improve upon. You will never have this figured out. I was talking with a young man this last weekend about finding balance in his life. And he said he was really struggling to kind of figure out work and family and kids and all the things. And I said, buddy, you're never going to get it. Like it's never going to be dialed in. As soon as you think it's you almost got it, something is going to fall away and then you're going to have to pick it back up. And then as soon as you start to get that right where it needs to be, you've noticed that you've neglected something else in your life. And that's something that we're always going to struggle with. But the fact, the very fact that you are, at, you are striving for that, you're striving for balance and excellence in your life means a lot. Having discipline, having control over your emotions is a big one. How many dudes do you know, for example, that lose their temper easily? Someone cuts them off in traffic and they freak out, start dropping the F-bomb and, and flipping them the bird and, get and ride their bumper. I mean, how many guys do you know act like that? because they don't have control over their emotions. They're not strong enough to control their very self. And that's a big one. That's more difficult for some than for others. I understand that we all have our strengths, we all have our weaknesses, but that is a big one. You have to be strong enough to have the, in the, and have the discipline to control yourself. Do you have the discipline? Do you have the self-control to not over drink? If you go to a party and there's a festivity happening and there's beverages all around and the open bar is there, do you have the discipline and control to resist, to, to hold back and just have the one or the two, whatever it is that, that you feel comfortable with, or maybe none at all? Um, I think it's important for us men, for us to always be aware of our surroundings, to always be alert, always be in control. And if you're hammered drunk at some party somewhere, you're absolutely useless to yourself and the people around you. So having a solid grasp on time management, using your time wisely, having a balance in your life, at least aspiring to have some sort of semblance of balance, I think is a really big deal. And that is a skill that we will always be working at, at, at improving upon. Okie dokie, 280 degrees west. Navigation, that's a big one. I am not very good at this. I have, uh, I don't know what it is. I think I have a decent sense of direction. I, I just have a really hard time remembering routes for some reason. It's like, is it a left turn here? I've been there several times. I should know if it's a left or right. And for some reason, my wife always gets pissed at me because I can't remember. I don't know what the problem is, but, but put me out in the woods and I almost never get turned around or lost. I don't really understand what the deal is. Anywho, do you have a good sense of direction? If you don't, you should probably look into enhancing that or improving upon it. Having good navigation skills, I think is a really, really big deal and oftentimes neglected because of advances in technology. We all have our GPS. We can all pull the GPS up on our phone or on our tablet or whatever it is on our, on our car. And it tells us exactly what to do with zero thought involved. 
And I think that that's a mistake if we rely upon that 100% of the time. We need to learn how to read a map. We need, need, need to learn how to use a compass effectively. Just basic directions finding skills, north, south, east, and west without a compass. Can you figure out which way north is without a compass or a GPS or some other means, modern means of finding it? I really did smash my finger. I wasn't kidding. <laughs> that hurt. But basic outdoorsmanship, survival skills, do you possess them? All men should know how to not die. If we get dropped off in the middle of the nowhere with very minimal equipment, as a man, you should know what to do to not die, at least for the short term. I think it's a requirement. Basic man skills of the outdoors, how to fish, how to hunt, how to make a trap, how to build a shelter, a simple lean-to shelter. How to make fire. If you've got a lighter, you should know how to make a fire. There's a lot of adult men out there. You may be one of them. And that's okay because you can make a change. There's a lot of adult men out there that do not know how to make fire even with a lighter. I have seen grown men try to light a log on fire with a lighter. And it didn't work. Imagine that. So basic outdoor skills, survival skills, I think are crucial. What's that you say? <coughs> Okay. Yep. That's a good idea. I think we should do that. Okay. Okay. I hear you. What's that? What's that you said? Really crucial skill that I think a lot of men neglect is being a good follower. Not all situations require you to be a leader. And in some situations, you are not the correct leader for that particular predicament that you're in. There might be somebody much more qualified, much more skilled, much more knowledgeable in whatever it is that you're facing at the moment. And you should be, you would be much more helpful as a follower than as a leader. Now, obviously, if someone doesn't step up and someone needs to take charge of a situation, then by all means do so. But I think you guys get what I'm saying. Learn to listen. Learn to listen a lot more than you talk. Pay attention to what people say, ask questions, learn about people and, and learn what their skills and weaknesses and what their opinions, are, their opinions are on certain subjects. Being a good listener, being a good learner, being a good follower is a crucial skill. <laughs> Do you have the skills necessary to be an effective leader? Are you experienced enough? Are you knowledgeable enough? Do you have the charisma necessary to inspire, to lead others in the right direction? Are you an effective parent? Are you an effective teacher? Do you have the patience to teach? Because oftentimes that's the biggest struggle with a lot of people when they're teaching their kids or they're teaching somebody else, anything doesn't really matter, is you lack the patience. Therefore you get frustrated and then your student gets frustrated and then nobody gets anything done. Being able to do something proficiently and then being able to teach something proficiently, those are two very separate things. I've, I have worked with some very, very talented people that were absolutely incapable of, of transferring that knowledge, those abilities onto somebody else, simply because they weren't good communicators, they weren't patient enough to, to, to teach. And that comes with just experience, that comes with confidence, that comes with practice. And I have found, honestly, I have found as I started teaching people, like for example, I used to coach a lot of weightlifting. And I found that when I started teaching others how to do it, my own weightlifting improved dramatically because I understood the subtle nuances and I understood what worked and what didn't work because I could see it in other people. Just the very fact that you're putting yourself out there and attempting to teach others will make you better. Ah, we gotta stop the bleed. We gotta stop the bleed. <laughs> medical training. What kind of medical skills do you have? What kind of medical knowledge do you possess? What kind of problems could you solve if you came upon somebody that was in need, that was hurt really badly? Can you stop the bleed? Obviously, don't put a tourniquet around your neck. But could you stop a, a massive arterial bleed? Could you splint a leg if somebody fell on the trail and broke their leg? Could you treat hypothermia in the field? 
Is there something you could, do you know CPR? These are all things that as men, we need to be able to do because people's lives depend on it. The chances of you needing to use your medical skills and know-how vastly outnumber the chances of you needing to use your firearm in a self-defense situation. Coming across a, a car accident where someone's in dire need of medical treatment immediately or else they may not survive it. The chances of that is much higher than you need to draw down on somebody. So I think that our skills, our medical skills need to be improved upon, mine included. Your kid could be choking on a hot dog. Do you know how to treat that? Do you know how to do the basics? Do you know how to open an airway and save somebody's life, a loved one's life when it really, really matters? This I think is super important and often neglected because it's not as fun, it's not as cool as getting out on the range and, and blasting and, and banging steel. 327 words per minute. I know, it's impressive. Last but not least is understanding how to use technology. Technology is advancing so fast every single day and I can't keep up. This is one that I really, really struggle with because it's just not in that interesting to me. I am much more interested in learning the old ways than I am the new. That's, I'm much more passionate about that. And whether you believe that's the right route to go or not doesn't really matter, but I think it's important for us to understand how to use technology to our advantage because like I said, it's advancing fast every single day and we need to try to keep up at least to some degree because there's some really, really powerful tools at our disposal that we can use for all sorts of purposes. Whether that's for producing income for your family or just making your life a little bit easier, more efficient, more streamlined. I don't know, and we have to understand that the, w the way the world works, and if we don't, we get left in the dust. So having some sort of grasp on basic technology and, and, and where it's going and, and how to utilize it to the best of your ability, I think is a big deal. All right, guys, those are the top 10 man skills that I think we should all possess, at least to some degree, or at least aspire to get better at them. If you are lacking in one of these skills, please leave it in the comment section. Tell us how you're lacking. Shush, chicken. Chicken. A lot of birds around here. Just please feel free to leave it in the comment section and tell us why and tell us some of the things that maybe you're doing to improve upon it or your plans to improve upon it. Don't let me feel alone in, in my lack of skills. <laughs> I lack many. So please share those in the comment section. I'd be really grateful for that. Hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I cannot wait to see you on the next one. I'm Jason Salyer with Survival Dispatch. As a Survival Dispatch insider, you'll be able to gain the knowledge, the skills, and equipment necessary to protect your family when it really, really matters. They'll provide crucial information on such things as stockpiling food, medical necessities, communication plans. You will receive specific actionable plans. You can deliver proven techniques to help you get home, shelter in place, or bug out safe.